Hi, everyone. The topic that we are going to be discussing today is gerrymandering. And gerrymandering is tied into all of the voting theory that we looked into in the previous section. So just for some context, right, we can look at our presidential elections. Okay? And I talked about this in a previous video where the way that we vote in this country for like our presidents is we're looking at the elect electoral college. So Every state is given two senators per state. No matter how big or how small your state is, how many people are in your state or not. The House of Representatives, however, the number of representatives that each state gets depends on the population of that state. So for example, here in California, we actually have the most number of representatives because of our population. We have a total of 53. Now the Senate and the House together make up this electoral college. So when it comes to voting, and you sum up all of the senators, right, two senators per state, 50 states, and then all of the House of Representative members, we have a total of 538 electoral college members. And in order to win this presidential election, you need to have majority of the votes, right? So in this case, we would need 270 votes to win the presidency. And this was what determined, um, again, which was like controversial in the year 2000 and the year 2016, that the person who got the popular vote didn't actually get enough electoral college votes. So we'll look at California. Okay. Like I said, California has 53 congressional districts, and this shows how big and and small some of these districts can get. So as, as a general rule, right, they said the population of each district has to be about roughly the same amount, right? So you'll look at some districts, for example, District 8 is really big in size, right? Because it's not as populated. But if we zoom in like in LA, maybe this little district here, this tiny little district represents about the same population as, as District 8. The idea of having congressional districts and, um, how, how they choose that we have these 50, 53 congressional districts is based on our population, right? So in March, around March, I think of this year, we were all probably sent in the mail the, the, the census, right? And they're like, fill out the census so that you're represented, right? Because if our population changes, we, we may be given more congressional seats or maybe less, okay? And it's about every 10 years uh, that they, every 10 years they do the census to get a good idea of the population so that each state can be represented accordingly. So just California, we have 53. If you look at a state like Wyoming, Wyoming actually only has one, one representative. And again, this is to hopefully like balance out and the idea of having these House of Representatives, these congressional districts is not controversial. What does end up becoming controversial is, is how these congressional districts are actually drawn. Like who decided to draw California like this? So some rules that they decided, each of these districts, the people in their vote and they elect one member to represent that district. And that member is elected on plurality. The person with the most votes ends up winning. Um, like I said, each district has to be about roughly the same size and population. And the other thing is we have to make sure that the districts are contiguous. Okay? And that means that you should be able to get from one piece in your district to the next, to the other side, right, without actually leaving your district. So a district like this would be completely fine. But if you have a district here, and the other piece of the district here, there's no way that I can go between these districts without potentially, if this were another district, going into that one, right? So you wanna make sure that these districts that we draw, you can get between any two points in that district without getting out of that district. Who decided that California was gonna be drawn like this? Now in California, we actually, actually have an independent commission that, um, draws this up for us. There are other states that the legislature will draw this up. Um, you might have advisory committees, um, a commission formed by a politician to draw these. And, and this is where it gets really controversial because depending on how you draw these 
districts will see that you can draw them to heighten the vote of some people or to weaken the voice of some people. So this is where gerrymandering comes in. This gerrymandering um, is this act where you are purposely drawing a district to favor your political party. Okay? So in Massachusetts in 1812, we had this governor who took the state and then, you know, we have all these districts that are being drawn and somebody gave him this map and he approved it. And the problem with this map is these districts at the bottom, they are, you know, a, I guess a normal-ish size, but they don't stand out. The one that does stand out is the one at the very top. They drew this district like really, really long. And this is where the whole gem gerrymandering comes in. Okay, They drew this district to favor a certain party, right? Because he thought that this party was going to be good for his Democratic Republican Party. Um, and that's where, where this term is, is coming from. 